Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on with our discussion of gram-negative organisms and discuss Yersinia enterocolitica. Yersinia is a gram-negative pleomorphic rod and coxobacillus that is often transmitted in pet feces, uh, contaminated milk, or pork. It can cause bloody diarrhea, pseudoappendicitis, or reactive arthritis in adults. Let's go back here. What is pseudoappendicitis? So pseudoappendicitis is where you're going to have that right lower quadrant pain, but it's going to be due to a mesenteric adenitis uh, in, around the terminal ilium or in the proximal colon. Typically, this is going to mimic signs and symptoms of appendicitis. Uh, however, it is not actually appendicitis uh, because of it is not infecting the appendix. Another gram-negative bacteria that we can talk about is a class in and of itself, and those are lactose-fermenting enteric bacteria. So what does that mean that they are lactose-fermenting? Well, lactose is what helps them grow, so they grow upon the fermentation of lactose, and how we know that they do that is we use McConkie's auger, and the McConkie's auger will turn pink if there's a lactose fermenter on that particular auger plate. So as you can see here, down the middle here, we have lactose fermenters on the left and non-lactose fermenters on the right. We can also use EMB auger, and those lactose fermenters will grow kind of purple and black colors uh, if they are a lactose fermenter on the EMB auger. On a regular plate, you will see E. coli actually grows with a green sheen to it. Uh, which is very characteristic of E. coli. So what are examples of these lactose fermenting enteric bacteria? Well, we just mentioned one, specifically E. coli. Uh, e. coli produces beta-galactosidase, which breaks down the lactose into glucose and galactose. So there's our lactose fermenting. Uh, another one is enterobacteria. And then finally, Klebsiella is another example of these lactose fermenting enteric bacteria. So let's look at some of those particular lactose fermenting bacteria a little bit closer. Let's start with E. coli, which is a gram-negative indole-positive rod. Uh, indole-positive, so an indole test, which you can see here in this particular test tube, is a biochemical test that we use to determine if an organism can convert tryptophan into indole. If it does convert it, it will turn pink like we see uh, in that particular test tube. So when we see that test come back positive, we have an indole positive, and it is a rod. Uh, I'll show you a picture of that here in just a minute. So what causes the virulence of E. coli? Well, first and foremost, the fembrae can lead us to cystitis and pyelonephritis. That allows the E. coli to actually climb up the urinary tract and infect the uh, urinary tract bladder upwards of the kidneys. It has a K capsule that can give us a possibility of causing pneumonia. That K capsule also can lead us to neonatal meningitis, so that's all due to the K capsule. And then it has a lipopolysaccharide endotoxin, and that can give us septic shock with E. coli. A particular thing about E. coli uh, that makes it very virulent is it does rapidly reproduce itself. I'm going to show you a quick image here that is going to show its multiple divisions, and one cell divides to two, then those two will divide, become four, the four will divide, become eight, the eight divide, become 16, and so forth. And you can see how quickly, over about a five-hour period, this E. coli has went from one individual bacteria into a huge uh, amount of bacteria that are, are present. As you see here, after about an hour, we've got about four, and then it goes exponentially, we're now at three hours, four hours, five hours, and as you can see there, it got to a very, very large state, and it blew up very fast. I'm going to let it go one more time here. There at the very end, you can see that it just went quickly. You can go back and watch that again if you want to. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. 
Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.